Hey guys, I've been working on a project that needs to store images that users upload. Now originally I was using Amazon S3 for this, but I was storing my server on Vulture and I was using this plan right here. And it comes with 20 gigabytes of SSD, so I thought why not store my images on there too. So I was using Nginx to serve these images and then also route to my server. But what I noticed is the images loaded a lot slower. Now I think the reason for this is I don't have a CDN and it's not caching and S3 just has a better and I'm not using a lot of memory right on this machine right here. So I was like okay and another thing that I disliked is I was now having to store people's images so I had to back them up which also took a lot of room because I'm now basically keeping multiple copies of their images to make sure I didn't mess anything up. So. To do this, I was like, I don't really want to do uh, store them on Vulture anymore. So I was going to switch it back to S3. But before I switched it back to S3, I wanted to look at some other options of where I might store some images. So I came across this thing called Backblaze, which has... Uh, which competes with S3 and you can see here's a little pricing chart and it looks like it just blows Amazon S3 out of the water like just with the pricing looks amazing so I was looking into it and I wanted to consider using this over Amazon S3 so let's take a look at whether Backblaze is a good option uh, over Amazon S3 or Azure or Google Cloud so with AWS, here is one way to upload files from a server. So to be able to upload it to S3, you need to have um, your credentials. So my AWS credentials I use to upload a file to S3. So a user on my website would send a file to my server, and then my server would send this image to S3 and then it would tag along my credentials. So that way I'm not exposing my credentials. So I don't want the website to be able to directly upload to S3 because then I'd have to give them the website my credentials, which is not great. But one downside to this plan is I have to send the image to my server, which then sends the image to S3. And so this whole transition of me sending the website, there's two trips, right? And sending an image is not that cheap of an operation, right? Because we're sending it two times. And it also holds up my server because my server is now having to upload images. So if there's a lot of people trying to upload images at the same time, my server can get bogged down. So Amazon has this really sweet feature called signed URLs. So how this works is now, let's say I have a website user and he wants to upload an image. Instead of sending the image to the server, he tells the image or the server, hey, I want to upload an image and it says get me a signed URL and so what the server does is it sends S3 and it's like hey S3 we need to get a signed URL and now I have the credentials on the AWS server here so that's how S3 knows who I am and I send it up and I'm like hey give me a URL and then S3 sends back a URL and I give this URL to the website so what's special about this URL well I can basically put my credentials in this URL. So this website can now upload an image to S3 using this URL that it gives me. So what's really cool about this is now the request between my website and the server and the server and S3 are now just sending basically some text. And now I'm no longer sending a whole image to my server. And this is a much faster operation for my website and server to do. So I'm offloading right the work. So now my website and S3 are doing the brute of the work. Um, uh, sending Well, the website always has the uploaded image, but now it's uploading it to S3, and S3 is going to take the image directly, and it avoids coming to my server. Now how this works is this URL I can, for example, put limits on. For example, it may only be valid for 30 seconds. So the website can send up an image within 30 seconds, and then it's expired, which makes it secure and safe to use. So this is a really nice feature that I really like, and uh, any place I go with, I would want to have this. So I was looking at Backblaze, and I wanted to see if they had a similar scheme to this that I could do this with. And so here's the documentation for Backblaze and uploading. And I took a look, and it says to upload, and I'm really just uploading a single file at a time. It says, first call this get upload URL. 
and then then you call upload file and this looked very similar to what how s3 does it right because if we come back here I'm requesting a URL and then I upload the image you using that URL so it looked very similar so I was excited I was like cool this looks like it has real potential so I looked at get upload URL and two things I really didn't like when I actually dug into the details so notice how get upload URL works so first even before I get the upload URL I have to authorize account I have to call this authorize account API which is fine I can do that on the server to authorize it but notice this for 24 hours it is valid or if something gets rejected um, so assuming you don't you know mess up your request for 24 hours you can upload images to this URL and notice um, you can upload as many as you want um, so that's very important and that's uh, if we come over here it talks about that uh, actually I think it talks about over here but as many URLs or as many files as you want um, to this URL that you request here here it talks about it here so that is what I really didn't like about Backblaze. So now I was able, once I get this URL, if I were to send this to the client, right? Because if we look at the diagram, I have to send this URL to the website for it to make the request to the S3. So now my website has access to this URL where they can send as many files as they want for 24 hours. And that did not seem cool with me. I didn't want to give my basically my website the client access that much because then they have a lot of power now and they can abuse this power with the URL so I wasn't sure if there was it didn't look like there was any options I could do here's the request it didn't look like there was any options I could pass to this get upload URL to change this it really looks like something I have to call on uh, the server and not and just upload the image from the server and another thing I really didn't like about backblaze was sometimes the upload URL fails. Uh, so take a look at these two paragraphs here. And this this scared me. I was like, why the heck would I have to do this? This seems really annoying. Uh, but basically, they upload the, uh, the URL that they get is directly pointing at this storage pod thing that they say. Um, and sometimes the storage pod might not be able to take the data. So what you have to do is you have to get a new URL. So that sounded really bad to me. Uh, and they said uh, we recommend at least five different upload URLs before sending an error. So what that means is I would have to send a request here. The server would send a request to Backblaze. We have a new URL. I send it back here. I then try uploading. If it fails, I have to go through this process again back and forth to get a new URL. And I really didn't like that. So with that said, with these things, uh, I decided not to go with black bla backblaze and uh, I haven't looked at what Azure and Google Cloud offer it looks like Azure has a little better pricing than s3 and uh, at least in these two metrics um, Google Cloud looks like it beats s3 in storage but not download but there's some other things to take a look at with the pricing and I want to see if these offer um, the signed URL that I was talking about as well so I'm going to be comparing those. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to go with, but I'm leaning towards S3 over Backblaze right now for those reasons. But let me know if you've used Backblaze before and uh, if you know how to get it to work uh, like I was talking about without needing to uh, expose basically your uh, credentials for so long. Yeah, but that's it for this video, guys. I hope this was helpful. Let me know also if there's any other places I should investigate for storing images. I don't really need something like a cloud. I think it's not Cloudflare, CloudFront, one of the Cloudinary, that's what it's called. Uh, for example, like Cloudinary, I don't really need a place where uh, to change the format of images, transform them. I just basically want a place like S3 where I can just store a lot of images um, that are uploaded by people and I need an API for that. Um, where I can just store them and cheaply, ideally. Right now, S3 is probably my top option. But yeah, let me know what you guys use for that. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.